Hello everyone, in this video we will be looking at the hydrogenation of oils. So we will be looking at how certain uh, fats and oils they undergo the hydrogenation process and what are the products being formed uh, with the help of hydrogenation process. So before we start, we will have a look at some of the basic concepts which are very important to understand the further concepts. So the first concept we have is what is the difference between the fats and the oil? So if we look at the difference basically, fat are solid at the room temperature whereas oils are liquid at room temperature. Fats are mainly obtained from the animal sources whereas oils are mainly obtained from the plant sources. And then fat they contain mostly the saturated fatty acids and hence because of they are containing more of the saturated fatty acids, they are considered somewhat unhealthy for the human diet. Whereas the oils, they contain mostly the unsaturated fatty acids. So they will be containing the MUFA and the PUFA and the essential fatty acids such as omega-3 and omega-6, which are known to be very good for the human health. The unsaturated fatty acids having the double bond, the double bond has a tendency to break. So as a result, they will have a low boiling point and a melting point because once heat is being taken, it can break down and as a result, the melting point is lower. Whereas fats, they contain all the mostly the saturated linkages and as a result, they are very, very heat stable and thus they will have a higher boiling point and a melting point. So for the same reason, they will be having less iodine value, whereas they will be having more iodine value. So as we know, iodine value is basically the amount of iodine which is absorbed and is, it directly corresponds to the degree of the saturation. So basically iodine value is a test we are conducting to check the saturation or the unsaturation. What happens is when we have a double bond and once iodine is added, these bonds will break into and then iodine will add. So basically if we have, if we are getting more iodine value, that means there is more of the unsaturated fatty acids. Acids. If we have saturated fatty acids, they will not be absorbing any iodine and hence the iodine value will be low. So in case of the fats, because they contain mostly the saturated fatty acids, they have less iodine value. Whereas the oils, because they contain uh, more of the saturated, uh, unsaturated fatty acids, they have more iodine value. So if you look at the examples, fat, we have butter, ghee, mostly the solid fats if we look at them. And in the oil, mostly the liquid ones, so olive oil, mustard oil, all of these which is extracted mainly from the plant sources are included in it. So now going further, we have hydrogenation. So hydrogenation basically, this concept is again very very important to understand how, uh, to understand the shortenings. So the addition of hydrogen to the unsaturated bond, C double bond C, results in a saturated C uh, C bond C. So basically what will happen is if we see the unsaturated fatty acids are the one which are containing these double bonds and once we are adding hydrogen as a result what will happen is this bond can break and all the bonds will be occupied by hydrogen. So if you see if you look over here this is the saturated fat there is no double bond and all the fats are linked to a hydrogen atom. So this is what basically is being done in the hydrogenation process. We are adding hydrogen to unsaturated fatty acid to convert it into a saturated form. So it increases the melting point as we have just seen in the difference between the fats and the oil that what will happen is the fats will have a higher melting point as compared to the oils. So if see uh, because the fats are containing more of the saturated ones. So if we are making more saturated bond ultimately what will happen is it will have a higher melting point so we will increase the melting point as well and ultimately we may cause an oil to become solid because we have just seen in the difference between the fats and the oil that fats are solid and oils are liquid so once i am what is happening is i am adding hydrogen to a liquid oil so once i am adding hydrogen to a liquid oil the unsaturated bonds will convert to saturated ones. So once the unsaturated bonds are converting to the saturated one, it will start to behave like a fat. It will try to, it will, uh, it will uh, have, it will start to have the characteristics of a fat. So it will become somewhat solid. The melting point and the boiling point will also become higher, right? So all of these changes are expected once we are adding hydrogen. 
because what we are doing is we are ultimately converting the unsaturated fatty acids into the saturated fatty acids. So now basically if we look further, so uh, that is why it may cause an oil to become somewhat solid and margarine and shortening. So these are basically produced by the process of hydrogenation. So what we will be doing is we will be doing either partial or complete hydrogenation in order to produce margarine and other shortening related products. So if you look at the basically hydrogenation process, what is basically happening, let's say we have a double bond over here and once we add hydrogen, what will happen is this bond will break and as a result it will be converted into a complete straight chain and hydrogen will be attached to all the remaining bonds of the carbon. As a result the unsaturated fatty acid that we see over here has been converted to a saturated fatty acid. Now this reaction is somewhat slower and as a result to fasten this reaction what we do is we add sometimes nickel as a catalyst is added in order to fasten this reaction it is being added. So what can happen sometime see we are adding hydrogen over here and this hydrogen is breaking this bond it is being converted into a single bond and hydrogen is being added all the at all the places. Now what can happen sometimes if hydrogen is not sufficient right if there is less of hydrogen what can happen is all the four places there might not be enough hydrogen available and because we are using very very high temperature so not only nickel even high temperatures are being utilized so once this high temperature is being utilized what can happen is if there is lack of hydrogen that is there is incomplete hydrogenation sometimes partial hydrogenation some of these double bonds instead of the cis form they may be converted to the trans form so basically what we mean over here is we have the fats so let's say we have a fat with one double bond so the hydrogen is present over here so this is how the structure is looking like right but now what we have done we are trying to hydrogenate the fat and as a result we have provided hydrogen but there is lack of the hydrogen so as a result what can happen is sometimes this cis form see as we see both the hydrogens are on the same side right so this is the cis form of an unsaturated fatty acid that this can be converted to the trans fat sometime that is what can happen is 1H being attached over here and 1H being attached over here right so now what will happen is as you see that it has been converted into a trans form right so now it is no longer in the cis form and as a result these trans fatty acids which are being formed during the hydrogenation process are known to be unhealthy for the humans and they are known to link to the cardiovascular disease and other heart related problem. Now once they are unhealthy what will happen is such shortenings that we are making will become unhealthy because during the production of the shortenings some of the trans fatty acids will be produced because we are providing hydrogen as well as heat both the conditions are being provided whenever there is lack of hydrogen partial hydrogenation is there it will be converted into trans fatty acids. So now amount of hydrogen added can be controlled right it completely depends on us as to how much hydrogen we want to add and how much unsaturated fatty acids we want to convert into the saturated fatty acids so as a result what will happen is they can be engineered with specific properties as degree of softness and chosen melting point so whatever melting point or softness we want that can be attained in this particular fat or oil right because what will happen is so let's say if we want a particular uh, melting or a boiling point just depending upon that particular melting point we will only be hydrogenating uh, we will only be saturating some uh, we will only be saturating some fatty acids or let's say if we want a very very high boiling point we, we can saturate more of the fatty acids right so it is completely in our hand we can engineer the fat we can basically we can have the properties which are desired by the manufacturer that complete characteristics can be formed as a result so partial hydrogenation may produce even trans fatty acids as, as we have just discussed that trans fatty acids will be sometimes produced so when it will happen basically if the hydrogenation is incomplete the relative high temperatures are used and they favor sometimes they flip the hydrogen on the carbon and as a result it is converted into the transform as we have just seen so if they are not hydrogenated during the process they remain present in the final 
product right if we hydrogenate it at so let's say the cis form has been formed but if we add enough hydrogen in it then this will be converted into a saturated fatty acids but however if if the hydrogen is not enough and we fail to do this they will remain in their trans form and they will be unhealthy for our diet so now if we're looking at the procedure as to how basically this is happening that is how hydrogenation process takes place so the equipment that we are utilizing is somewhat like an autoclave so first the vessel is heated with the neutralized and the bleached oil so first we are heating the neutralized and the bleached oil so after the uh, these two three steps of the refining we are heating the oil and once we are heating it we are dehydrating it at 170 degrees celsius for 1.5 to 2 hours so then we are heating it as high as 170 degrees celsius for around 1.5 to 2 hours the reason for heating the oil this much if there is any water present in the oil that water should be evaporated why because we are going to add nickel as a catalyst for the reaction and if water is present it can poison the nickel it will not work very well as a result we have to remove any water and we already know water is not desirable in the fat and fat related products that we are dealing with so water may poison the nickel that is why it might affect the quality that is why first step is heating the oil to 170 degrees celsius for as long as 1.5 to 2 hours so that no water is remaining after that airtight autoclave has so the autoclave equipment that we have has heating coils then there are baffles to provide continuous steering we have some baffles we have hydrogen gas supply because hydrogenation process right hydrogen has to be given and then we have certain gauges to measure pressure as well as to measure the temperature because we need to monitor the temperature and the pressure of the vessel continuously all of this will be there so first let us look at the diagram to make it more clear and then we will go back to the theory portion so this is how basically the equipment look like it is more like an autoclave so if you see over here we have a motor and this will keep on rotating these baffles will keep on rotating right we want to give continuous steering and then hydrogen gas is being supplied so if we look a supply of hydrogen gas will be provided hydrogen gas is added under pressure in the form of tiny bubbles at the base of a agitator so basically the hydrogen will be added from the base of the container and we have oil over here so oil temperature increases once the hydrogenation process begins right so oil temperature will start to increase as the hydrogenation process is beginning so we have added nickel as a catalyst over here so from here we are adding nickel as a catalyst from the bottom we are supplying hydrogen so we have got both the conditions as well as we have heated it so all the three conditions are there that is nickel hydrogen and uh, nickel hydrogen and heat so as a result hydrogenation will occur nickel catalyze uh, catalysis is added in the oil slurry so this is how basically it works so now if we go back to the theory portion hydrogenation gas is being passed through a perforated hydrogen coil under the vacuum and mixed with continuous steering so there will be continuous steering in the equipment so that the hydrogen can be mixed completely in the oil nickel is being added and the sample is drawn continuously for checking the melting point so what we will do at some intervals we will keep on drawing a sample from this autoclave and we will keep on checking it for the degree of the saturation and the unsaturation because as we have discussed we might want to control how much saturation we want to give we might want to get a desired um, boiling point desired melting point right so how we are going to attain that we will keep on after some hydrogenation we will keep on taking a sample we will check the degree of saturation and unsaturation how we will do that basically we will look at the iodine value right as we have just discussed that iodine value will tell us the degree of the saturation so what will happen is iodine value will give us a estimate as to how much unsaturated or saturated fatty acids are still present so we will keep on performing iodine value test on it and once we have got the desired value we will stop this process we will stop supplying hydrogen we will stop stirring it and basically then our oil is ready we will simply uh, we will simply leave it and the uh, fat with the desired properties will be ready so that was basically all about the hydrogenation so now going on to shortening so shortening are basically produced by the process of the hydrogenation which we have just studied so in order to uh, in order to understand shortenings we looked at why and how hydrogenation is being done and why we want to hydrogenate a fat so basically we are doing it to engineer fat specifically as per the qualities which is required by a manufacturer 
So now shortenings is any type of solid. See, now if you look at the name itself, it is very clearly telling us shortening means it has something to do with the shortening effect, right? So basically any oil fat which is being added in the bakery products, which is going to give a shortening effect. What we mean by shortening over here is that will prevent the formation of gluten matrix in the baked good. Right, so what will the fat do? If we are adding fat to the dry flour, the fat will coat the particles of the flour, right? As a result, what will happen is there will be a lesser formation of the gluten. It will be limited. Inter, uh, inter, uh, interlinking of the gluten, gluten is being prevented over here, allowing for creation of the non-elastic products like cakes. So what will happen is, if we are not adding the shortening or the fat, uh, what can happen is the products we are attaining because of the gluten can be very, very chewy and very, very sticky. As a result, if we are adding fat, it provides a tenderization effect to the food product. It makes the food product much tender and uh, we can say much softer. So uh, basically it is any fat that we are using to prevent the formation of gluten in the baked good, allowing for the creation of non-elastic products. It interferes with the gluten network formation, right? So as we know, gliden and glutenin, uh, gliden and glutenin will combine together to form gluten. And as a result, since the gluten formation is restricted, uh, what will happen is the baked products such as the pie crust, because gluten creates a gummy chewy end product. Why we do not want so much of gluten production? Because if there is complete gluten production, then whatever product we are having will have a very chewy kind of a structure. But we want that the cake, pastries, all of them, they should be somewhat softer. Tenderness is much, much desirable, right? So as a result, we are adding the fat. What they will do, they will interfere with the gluten formation and so much of gluten formation will be prevented. And as a result, the product will have a softer texture. So sometimes, uh, see, we see butter as solid at room temperature. So mainly these shortenings are solid at the room temperature. Now, even though butter is solid at the room temperature, the term shortening is more often, it is very rarely referred to butter and it is more often related to the margarine and the other fats. Generally, this term is being used for other fats. Shortening remain intact and revert back to semi-solid state upon the cooling. So one advantage here is, they, they remain intact in their structure and once cooling is done, they again, they are converted into the semi-solid form which they originally are. So whatever products we are making from the shortening are soft while those from the butter are crispier. So butter we are generally adding when we want to make the product more crispy. But once we want to give a tenderness to the product, for example, in the cakes and the pastries, more of the tenderness is required. So for such kind of products, we might go for utilizing shortening instead of the butter. So bakery shortening, now bakery shortening as the name is telling the shortening which we are utilizing in the bakery, right? So what basically they are, they are the hydrogenated fat with which an emulsifier agent has been added. So the emulsifier agent is added in a sufficient quantity so as to give it exceptional blending ability with other ingredients, right? Once we are adding the shortening in the cake and the other bakery products, it has to blend completely in the product. So for that reason, we are adding certain emulsifiers to give it a very, very good blending ability. So once we are adding certain emulsifiers with it and specifically targeting to make it for the bakery products, we can call it as bakery shortenings. Now, so the, they have a flavor which is neutral unlike butter. Butter has a typical flavor, right? So once we want to go for more neutral kind of flavors, we do not want a fat to give some kind of a flavor, we can go for again using the shortenings. So coming on next, why we need to use the shortenings when we have other fats, butter and all. So there are a number of advantages of utilizing the shortenings. So if we look at the advantages, first one is they are extremely shelf stable and require no refrigeration. For the obvious reason, they contain more of the saturated fat and we know that unsaturated fats are more susceptible to rancidity. Saturated fats are not much susceptible to rancidity and other changes, right? So they are extremely shelf stable. They will stay for a very, very long time and uh, they will not need any refrigeration for their storage, whereas butter might need a refrigeration for its proper storage. And then they are less expensive as compared to the animal fats such as butter. It adds tenderness to the product. They are known to add tenderness as we have seen. If we add butter, we get more of a crispy product. If we are adding shortening, we get more of a softer and a 
tender product. So if we want to produce light or clear colored product and we want a high degree of plasticity in the product, again, then we can go for using shortenings. It can be used if strong fat flavors are not needed as just discussed. It does not have a strong fat flavor like butter. So if we want a neutral kind of a flavor, we do not want fat to impart such kind of uh, any flavor, then we can go for using a shortening. Shortening contain less water than butter. Also the water content is less than butter. So if the water is less than butter, the splatter during the frying, when we are utilizing fat for frying, if uh, water is present in the butter, so there will be splattering, right? So if less water is present, there will be less splatter during the frying. Also, it delays the rancidity for the obvious reason that they are saturated fatty acids and it permits its repeated use with the less degradation. Vegetable shortening increases the smoke point as well and hence it will allow food to be cooked very very quickly without the oil having a burnt taste or an unpleasant flavor. Now because the smoking taste, uh, smoking point is very very high, the oil can have, uh, can be utilized at higher temperature without any unpleasant flavors. So with this, I end this video and I hope that this topic was clear to you. Thank you.